Hello there, and welcome to this live workshop. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can build a powerful vocabulary in the English language. I will share with you all the different ways that people use to learn and remember new words so that you can choose the methods that work for you. Also, because this is a lesson about vocabulary, you're going to learn more than 30 useful words and phrases in this video. Now, <clears throat> I have divided this uh, I have divided the vocabulary tips into two sections. First, what are the best ways to find new words? And second, how to learn those new words so that you can remember, uh, remember them for a long time and use them in your own speech and writing. <clears throat> now for each tip, there is a task. You can download the, uh, the task checklist and the list of the vocabulary words using the links in the description. The links will be available after the live stream ends it will be available in the video description below the video. Now, um, last week on this channel, some of you may remember this, I, <coughs> excuse me, I had asked all of you about your favorite ways to improve your vocabulary. Now, I received more than 100 responses to that. Thank you to everybody who responded, and I'll be sharing some of the top answers with you in this video. Okay, so let's get down to business. Let's get down to business is an expression that means let's get started. Let's begin our serious discussion. So let's talk about the best ways to find new words. The number one best way to improve your vocabulary is to read a lot. Now one of my viewers, Prakash, says reading is what makes us improve our, our vocabulary and I agree completely. There is no better way to come across new words. Now, some people like to take word lists with lots of words on them, and they like to memorize them. But that's actually not a very useful approach because we tend to forget those words. Now, Pratap and Ishan uh, also make a very important point. Pratap says, you must choose a book according to your interest. Ishan likes to read books on his favorite topics. So, <clears throat> this is key, right? You should read what you enjoy reading. Find material on your favorite topics. If you make reading a long-term daily habit, you will automatically learn new words. One other viewer, Vale, uh, reads a lot and also likes to watch my lessons. I appreciate your saying that, Vale. I try to teach a lot of vocabulary in my lessons, so make sure to, um, uh, to follow the lessons on this channel. Now the point here is that if you're serious about expanding your vocabulary, you must become an avid and voracious reader. Those are two uh, useful vocabulary words that you can take away from this lesson. The word avid means enthusiastic. It's an adjective. You can be an avid reader, an avid traveler, an avid viewer of my channel for example, or an avid listener of maybe classical or rock music. Voracious means having a great hunger for something. A voracious eater wants to eat a lot of food and a voracious reader wants to read a lot of books. So I'm asking you to become an avid and voracious reader to develop your vocabulary. So here's the task for this tip. Make a commitment that you will read for at least one hour per day every day and stick to that commitment. If you want, you can start with maybe half an hour, but then move up to an hour a day. Okay, you should do that. Now I read for about three hours a day, just so you know. So what should you read? Well, in the community post, the uh, most popular type of reading material was actually the newspaper. Now it can be a great way to learn words. What I like about the newspaper is that it's easy to set aside a certain amount of time every day to read the paper and you can make it a habit you know, to do that at that time every day. But there is a problem with it which uh, Monica highlights over here. Um, she says she gets bored just by reading the newspaper for half an hour. Now it should be bored. Well that is in fact what will happen. Why? Because the main purpose of newspapers is to report what is happening in society and not to entertain you. So news stories, news stories can be quite drab. Okay. The word drab means boring, dull, 
uninteresting, unexciting, and so on. But there is a solution. Now, Abhirami says that she finds new words from the newspaper on her favorite topics, especially on the movie column. So instead of wasting your time trying to read everything in the newspaper, a better approach is to read the main stories and then dip into parts of the newspaper that you are interested in. Do you know the meaning of dip into? Dip into means to select and read small amounts of something. This way, you will save time and you will learn vocabulary that is relevant to you, that is suitable for your situation or for your needs. That's what the word relevant means. Okay, so here's the task for this tip. The task is to begin reading the newspaper for about 30 minutes every day. Do this today or tomorrow. You can either read a print newspaper or you can read articles on a newspaper's website. That's what I do. Read the main stories and then read portions that interest you. Don't just read everything. Okay, now speaking of relevant vocabulary, another great place to find it is in magazines. Now magazines are awesome because you can find them on just about any topic. Just about is an informal expression that means almost. So I'm saying uh, almost any topic. You can find magazines on just about any topic. So whatever you like, movies, music, fashion, politics, science, cars, electronics, whatever it is, you can find lots of magazines that give information and news about that topic. Raghavendra, who I saw in the uh, live chat just a moment ago, he says that he likes to collect vocabulary from interesting magazines. He mentions the word context. Now this word means the situation in which a word is used. It's the surrounding information. So if you're reading something and you find a word uh, in the middle of that text, the context is the surrounding information. And this is what magazines give you. They present useful vocabulary within the context of your topic. And that is why I love magazines and I read a lot of them. And normally, Magazines cost more than newspapers, but nowadays most magazines have their own websites where you can go and read their articles free of cost. So the task for this tip is do some research and pick at least three magazines on your favorite topics. Then either buy subscriptions or bookmark their websites on your computer. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also download their apps if those are available. Make it a habit to read articles on these magazines at least once per week. All right, the next tip is to read stories. As human beings, we love stories. You know, anytime someone tells a story, we listen, we get engaged. If a story is very interesting, we even get engrossed in it. Get engaged means to get involved. That's what it means in this context. So it means that we give it our attention. Engrossed means to become extremely focused. It, me it means that you become so focused on the book that you're reading that you forget about other things. So for this reason, stories are a great source of vocabulary because we feel a connection to those words. Now, if you feel that many stories are difficult and that you can't understand a lot of the words, start with books for young children as Akhtar does. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, children's stories tend to contain simple language, and that's why they're great if you want to start uh, at a beginner level. Once you're comfortable with those, you can move on to stories for older children, and then stories for teenagers, and finally, stories written for adults. The task for this tip is find and read one short story in English this week. If you like it, make it a regular habit. Now, before we go on to the next tip, I just want to remind you, all of the tasks and all the vocabulary that you um, see in this lesson, all of that will be available for download as a document at the end of the live stream. You will find the links in the description. Okay, now when you are able to comfortably read stories for older teenagers or adults, when you get to that stage, you should add novels to your reading list. Now what is a novel? A novel is a story but it's a longer book, okay? A book that's 200 to 300 pages, maybe even more. 
the Harry Potter series is a great example of novels and there are many more available on the market to suit various interests. Now they're normally written for native speakers so they, they will be the most challenging. Ashish says that in each page he finds about 10 to 12 new words. So you can actually get a lot of vocabulary from novels. That's something that I used to do. I used to read a, lo a lot of novels when I was a teenager and I was able to um, really improve my vocabulary um, using them. Now also, you know, novels can draw you in and they can immerse you in the English language. Uh, immerse means to put something into a liquid completely, like into water. In this context, I'm saying that novels will immerse you in the sea of English. So the task for this one is to go to a library or a bookstore. Now if you read on a Kindle, you can go to the Amazon Kindle store. And I'd like you to get one novel, either a paper, a print novel, or an electronic uh, ebook version, or one on your Kindle. But in whatever form, get a novel that you think might be interesting and just start reading it. Now, when you want to read, but you don't feel like holding a book in your hands, you can always find plenty of reading material free of charge online. One of my favorite places for reading on the internet is Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia, where you can read comprehensive articles on any topic of your choosing. Do you know the meaning of comprehensive? Comprehensive means complete, including all the important details. Of your choosing basically just means of your choice. It means the same thing. But of your choosing is a little more informal and a little more conversational. Now I highly recommend that you use Wikipedia often as a learning tool. I'm pointing this out here because there's so much good information, a lot of excellent English articles available free of charge on that website. A lot of people don't use it, but I think you should. I do all the time. You know, I use Wikipedia a lot. Now it's available in many languages, but of course I want you to read the English Wikipedia. Okay, and best of all, you know, Wikipedia is free of charge. You don't have to pay anything for it. So the task for this tip is visit the Wikipedia website, explore it, look around, search for something that interests you, find one article and read it. You don't have to read the entire article. You can dip into parts that you find interesting. Now up to this point, we've been talking about reading, but there are other ways to discover new words. One of these is to watch English language movies, which as you can see from these comments was, was also a very popular answer in the community post. Now as Vaishnavi and Neto point out, reading can often get boring if you can't understand a lot of words and if you're pausing to look up the meanings in a dictionary. But in a movie, you can follow along with what is happening in the story and you can enjoy it even if you don't understand everything. You will still learn a lot of new words, but movies can also help you to gain insight into the cultures of English-speaking countries. Insight means a deep understanding of something. Think of that word as insight, as if you can see into the inner workings of something, so you get a deep understanding of it. <clears throat> now, when you watch a movie at home, it can be beneficial to watch it with English language subtitles and not subtitles in your own language. And this is something that many of the viewers whose comments we just looked at have suggested. By the way, beneficial uh, is an adjective that means helpful or giving benefits. The task for this tip is watch one English language movie this week and note down some useful vocabulary from it then make a commitment to watch at least one English language film every week. Along with watching movies, you should also follow at least one TV series regularly. TV shows have a certain advantage over movies. Do you know what that is? The advantage is that a movie is what, maybe two hours long, whereas a TV show is much longer, lasting for weeks or even months and you can get hooked on the show. To get hooked on something, like uh, maybe a novel or a TV show, means to become really involved in it, maybe even addicted to it, so that you can't stop reading or watching it. 
Now, this idiom can also be used to talk about bad types of addiction, like a person being hooked on a drug. But of course, we want to get hooked on good, helpful things like books or, or TV shows. Now, TV shows force you to make an emotional investment in the story. That is, the story makes you feel a lot of emotions. You develop a deep connection with the characters and the world that the story takes place in. This is fantastic because this immersion will not only teach you lots of new vocabulary, it will make those words, phrases, and idioms that you come across easier to remember. Because they won't just be floating around randomly in your mind, the words will be embedded in the story. To embed means to fix one thing strongly uh, into another thing. So I'm saying that the new words will be fixed within the story in your mind when you watch a TV show. And this is a great way to bring those words into your active vocabulary. That is vocabulary that you can use. So the task for this tip is to start watching one English language TV series. Either find one on TV or look at some ratings on the internet like um, on imdb.com which is a website for finding movies and TV shows or ask your friends. Okay, Ask your friends for recommendations. Uh, tell them to let you know what they watch and uh, you can watch that series as well. The benefit of doing this uh, is that if you and your friends all watch the same TV show you can discuss that show with each other in English from time to time. It's a very uh, good exercise to work on your English. Now, there are other things that you can watch on TV besides a series. You can watch cartoons as Babu Ratram suggests. Just like reading uh, children's stories, cartoons can be a lot of fun. Or like Tabasun does, you can watch the news. Watching the news on TV is a good alternative to reading the newspaper. Alternative means a different option or choice. Now, um, we'll come back to that in a moment. Vissal actually likes to watch interviews of famous people. You might also be interested in talk shows. That's where people sit down and have a conversation. An example of this is a podcast. That's the name for online radio shows. They're usually not available on TV, but I thought uh, that I would uh, mention them here. You can find podcasts related to any area of interest. Just go on Google or YouTube and search for your topic and podcast. For example, football podcast or movies podcast or even English learning podcast. Uh, and podcasts are great for learning vocabulary. So anyway, to get back to TV, the task for this tip is to pick one English language news program and one talk show and start watching each one. Now if you're the musical type, then you probably already know that songs can be a treasure trove of new vocabulary. Do you know the meaning of treasure trove? Treasure trove is actually, sorry folks, I'm all over the place with my, uh, with my uh, keyboard today. But treasure trove is an idiom that means a place where lots of valuable things can be found. Uh, we often say that something is a treasure trove of information or a treasure trove of vocabulary, etc. So I'm saying that, that songs can be a place where you find and learn lots of vocabulary. If you don't already listen to English language music, then I encourage you to begin today. Now, whoever you are, I'm sure that there is a genre of English language music that you will enjoy. Genre is a word that means a style of art, music, literature, or film. It's pronounced genre. 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 Now, some movie genres can be drama, romance, action, horror, etc. And some popular music genres are pop, rock, metal, jazz, country, rap, and so on. Quite a number of viewers said in the community post that they listen to songs and that they learn vocabulary from songs. And let me tell you, I am part of that club too. My own vocabulary has benefited tremendously from listening to music. Tremendously means greatly or very much. Not only are songs great for learning new words, you will also come across interesting and creative ways of expressing ideas. On top of that, if you really like a song, it might get stuck in your head. 
right? If that happens, you will be humming and singing that song a lot. And that will give you a lot of vocabulary and pronunciation practice. So the task for this tip is listen to one English language song. This can be a song you've never heard before, a new song for you, or it can be one of your favorite songs. Then, after you listen to it, find the lyrics for it online and analyze the lyrics. Lyrics means the words of the song. Pick out words, phrases, and other interesting language that you can use in your everyday conversations. And you should make this a habit. Whenever you listen to English language songs, find the lyrics, analyze them, try to learn new vocabulary from the lyrics. All right. Don't forget the internet either for learning vocabulary. There's a lot of listening material that you can find on the internet. Ajad and Sivakumar both like to listen to lectures. Now Sivakumar also says that uh, my lessons have helped to increase his vocabulary. I'm very happy to hear that. Asher listens to TED Talks. Now if you don't know about TED, it's a company that produces lectures on various interesting topics. These are called TED Talks. The best part is there are thousands of TED Talks available free of charge uh, right here on YouTube on the company's official channel. You see the link on the screen. Of course, there are also plenty of other useful channels that you can turn to for vocabulary. Hannah likes to watch American shows on YouTube and Saumika watches English lessons. Now, if you're watching this, then you know already that there are lots of English learning channels on YouTube. So here's my task for you. Go to the TED Talks YouTube channel and listen to one talk. Then find and subscribe to at least 10 English learning channels on YouTube so that you regularly get their latest lessons. Once again, all of these tasks and all the vocabulary words will be available for download at the end of the live stream. You will find the links in the description after the live stream ends. Now, if you are a regular smartphone user, you'll be happy to know that there is a plethora of vocabulary apps available on the market. Okay, what does plethora mean? Plethora is a noun and it means a large amount of something, maybe even more than you need. We often talk about a plethora of information, a plethora of opportunities, a plethora of problems, choices, and so on. My point here is that there is a plethora of vocabulary apps. That is, that is there are many vocabulary apps that you can install and use. Now, Asima says that uh, she likes to add new words as favorites in the Merriam-Webster app. Merriam-Webster is a popular dictionary. Now, personally, I'm not a huge smartphone user, but I went into uh, the Play Store on my Android phone, and I did a search for the term vocabulary, and I was pleasantly surprised to find thousands of highly rated apps. Pleasantly surprised means that it was a good surprise for me. There are even games particularly word games that can aid your vocabulary development. So my task for you is go to the app store on your mobile device, then search for the term vocabulary and try out some free apps. Okay, so far we've talked about the best places to learn new vocabulary. But what should you do when you find new words? What do you do? Well, here's what you should do. Whenever you come across a new word that you want to learn, you should record it somewhere. We do this to make sure that we can come back and review our vocabulary words and not forget them. Now you can, I forgot to show you this piece of text. It just says, whenever you come across a new word, you should record it. You can do this in a notebook. Now, if you're going to use a notebook, make sure you don't use that notebook for any other purpose. Make it your vocabulary notebook and use it only for recording and reviewing vocabulary. Alternatively, you could save your new words in a Microsoft Word or Excel document. I use Excel to store vocabulary that I learn. Now, if you do this, you should create an online backup of the file, like on Google Drive, so that you don't accidentally delete or lose it. Another option is to download a vocabulary app like we just discussed. So here's a quick task for you. Uh, choose your method of recording vocabulary. Either buy a notebook or create a word or an Excel file or find an app that lets you save words that you learn. 
Okay, let's say that you're reading something and you come across a new word, a word that you don't understand. You now want to learn and record this word. How should you do it? Well, before you look it up in a dictionary or do anything, the moment you find a word that you want to learn, you should first try to guess the meaning of the word from the context. Now, let's say, for example, that you read this line in a novel. As he was walking down the street, he suddenly tripped on a rock and fell. Imagine you don't know the meaning of tripped. Now, what could it mean? Now, before you go and check it in a dictionary, think about the entire sentence, think about the context, and just try to guess its meaning. Now, we know that this word needs to be an action. Uh, it's something that this person either did or it's something that happened to him, so it's a verb. It also has an ed ending, which you would expect from a past tense verb. Now, it's not a thing, clearly, so it's not a noun. It's not describing any noun, so it's not an adjective either. So what could be the meaning of this word? Well, if he tripped on a rock and then he fell, then it could mean the same thing as stumbled. That is, he hit his leg uh, on the rock accidentally, which caused him to fall, and that is actually the meaning of the word. So this is how you do the guessing. Look at the whole sentence and try to come up with the meaning of the word. The benefit of doing this is that you will have a prediction for the, uh, of the meaning before you check it in a dictionary, and that will make the exercise meaningful. Predicting the meaning first is much better than seeing a new word and then mindlessly reading the dictionary definition of it. Mindlessly means without thinking, without using the brain or the mind. So now, once you have a guess for what the word might mean, you go to the dictionary. Okay? For this, obviously, you will need a dictionary. Now, Himani and Neeraj both talk about translation. Himani says that... Uh, Whenever she doesn't know the meaning of a word, she likes to look up the Hindi translation of that word. Now this can help you to quickly know the meaning of a word, but I recommend that for every word that you learn, you also look it up in an English to English dictionary. When you do that, it will train, uh, it will train you to think directly in English without resorting to your native language. Resort to is a phrasal verb that means to do something because you don't have any other choice or you have no other choice. Now, STH, you see that two times here. STH means something and you will see that in dictionaries as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. So anyway, I'm saying here that using an English to English dictionary will get you out of the habit of going to your native language every time. Now, some of you have said that uh, you like to read the dictionary in order to learn new words. K8 Flyer says, when I was young, I had a dictionary in my bathroom. That way, you know, every time you use the bathroom, you can read the dictionary. And pretty soon, you can read it cover to cover. Cover to cover means from beginning to end. But the same viewer also touches upon a problem with this approach. K8 Flyer says, it lacks the effect of the experience so you easily forget the words now this is very true words in a dictionary are stripped of context remember that context means surrounding information so I'm saying that the surrounding information is removed from the words in a dictionary there are other uses for this phrasal verb by the way if we say the athlete was stripped of his medals. It means the medals were taken away from the athlete by the authorities, maybe because he cheated. Or drivers who disobey traffic laws can be stripped of their driver's license. But getting back to dictionaries, they are not meant for us to discover new words. They're meant to be a quick reference that we can turn to, to check uh, the meaning of a word. So I recommend that you don't waste time reading a dictionary. There is plenty of more interesting, immersive, experiential reading material out there as we've discussed uh, a lot in this lesson. There are so many other types of reading material um, that you can read. But in any case, you do need a dictionary. And you need dictionaries so that you can look up the meanings of words. I personally prefer electronic dictionaries that you can access either through their websites 
or using their apps. My own personal favorites are the ones that you see on the screen. I like Cambridge, Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionaries, Merriam-Webster, especially for its pronunciation. There's an easy button that you can click and it plays every time on Merriam-Webster. And there's also Macmillan. But the point about pronunciation is that on most of these dictionary apps, um, actually not the apps, I haven't tried their apps. I use the websites, but on their websites, if you go and try to click the pronunciation button, um, I found that generally they don't, they either don't work or there's a delay. But with Mer Merriam-Webster, as soon as you click on that button, you always hear the pronunciation. So for that reason, I really like Merriam-Webster. But in any case, I recommend that you use more than one. In fact, the task for this tip is to pick three or four electronic dictionaries and to either bookmark their websites on your browser or install their apps on your phone and begin using them regularly. Okay, so now you've, let's say you were reading something, you came across a new word, in your mind you tried to guess the meaning from context, so you have a prediction in your mind, and now you turn to your dictionary. So you look up the word, and you want to record it in your vocabulary notebook. So first, check the part of speech and the definition in the dictionary and see if your guesses were correct. But do be careful, some words function as different parts of speech in different situations and you might find multiple meanings for the same word in a dictionary so you will need to find the meaning that best, best fits your current context and read that definition a couple of times to make sure you fully understand it. After that you should copy the definition and part of speech to your vocabulary notebook or file. Now most people will stop here and move on and continue reading but not you the learner who is committed to building a powerful vocabulary. There are a few other important pieces of information about the word that you should record. You should copy the pronunciation symbols from the dictionary to remind you of the correct pronunciation of the word in the future. And this is where electronic dictionaries are very useful. They allow you to listen to a recording of the correct pronunciation as I just mentioned um, a, a while ago. So let me give you an example. Let's say that the word you're learning is obnoxious. This word means very rude, unacceptable, or offensive. We often talk of a person's obnoxious behavior. Now this word has three syllables, obnoxious, and the stress is on the second syllable. So obnoxious, obnoxious. So listen to that in the dictionary. If you click that pronunciation button, this is what you will hear. You will hear the correct pronunciation. Listen to that, practice saying it a couple of times, then copy the symbols. If you are not comfortable with the symbols, now you see the symbols over here on the screen. If you're not comfortable with them, if they look strange to you, don't worry about it. Just copy them to your notebook or file. You will get comfortable with them over time and with practice. After this, you should note down some example sentences. You can copy the examples in the dictionary, like the ones you see on the screen. The waitress's behavior was downright obnoxious. Downright means completely, very, and it's usually used in a negative sense, like here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second example here is, Matt can be quite obnoxious when he's mad about something. So you can take the, the examples in the dictionary and you can copy them to your notebook. However, another useful exercise is to try to make your own sentences with the words that you're learning. I'm happy to know that many of you do this already. You can see a lot of comments from your viewers saying that they do this. Now when you first learn a word and you try to make sentences, you may not use it correctly. Your sentences might sound unnatural or artificial, but that's okay. In the future, as you revisit, that is, as you come back to your vocabulary notebook or file, you will be able to identify your own mistakes and correct them. And that will actually give you the satisfaction of seeing your English improve. So even if you're not confident that you can use the words correctly, it's okay. Try to make sentences with words that you are learning. Now, you should also 
take the opportunity to find a few related words, some synonyms and antonyms as they are called. You can use a thesaurus to do this. A thesaurus is like a dictionary, but its purpose is to give you synonyms and antonyms of words. A popular one is thesaurus.com. But you can also buy a physical one from a bookstore or download a thesaurus app on your phone. So some synonyms of obnoxious or are objectionable, disagreeable, and distasteful. And some antonyms are friendly, decent, and pleasant. Now just be aware that uh, synonyms and antonyms won't all mean the exact same thing as each other. So before you use these words, you should look up each one in a dictionary to make sure that you can, uh, that you learn them, that you can use them correctly. Now with some words, you can also break them apart and analyze their roots. You can analyze their roots, their prefixes and suffixes as both um, Badri, Chaitanya and Banu Singh suggest. For example, let's say that the word you're learning is disinterested. You see that there are actually three parts. There's interest, which is the core of the word. And then there's the prefix dis. Prefix means something that we add to the beginning of the word. This prefix usually makes the word negative or says that something is not the case. And we also have the, we also have the suffix ed. Suffix is what we add to the end. In this case, the ED is used to make the adjective disinterested. Now, by the way, disinterested does not mean the same thing as uninterested. Uninterested means feeling no interest. She was totally uninterested in modern art, for example. That means she didn't have a liking for modern art. Disinterested, on the other hand, means impartial. Every legal case must be heard by a disinterested judge. That means a judge who does not favor one party in the case. The judge is impartial. You definitely don't want an uninterested judge because that's someone who has no interest in the case. Right? You might see that judge yawning in the courtroom as the lawyers argue their cases. Now the point here is that analyzing prefixes and suffixes can help you to more easily learn new words. Okay, so the task for this tip, I actually have a few things I'd like you to do. Pick one word that you recently learned and do all of these steps with that word. Look it up in the dictionary, pay attention to its part of speech, read its definition again, listen to the correct pronunciation and practice it a few times. Read the examples in the dictionary and then practice making some sentences on your own. Then try to find some synonyms and antonyms. Use a thesaurus to do this. And finally, see if there are any prefixes, suffixes or any roots in the word that you can analyze. Okay, try all of these. Now to remember any word that you learn, you should use mnemonics as Monisha and Aditi have suggested. Now, the word mnemonic means any technique that you use to remember something. I want you to pay attention to the pronunciation. It's mnemonic. The M at the beginning of the word is silent. Okay, so it's mnemonic. Now, as Aditi says, a mnemonic can be an imaginary story that you create in your mind to uh, connect it to that word. Or it can be a funny image. Think of the um, uninterested, bored, yawning judge with his eyelids drooping as the lawyers fervently argue their cases. And keep in mind that that's not the judge you want. You want the alert and impartial disinterested judge. To droop means to hang down. So drooping means hanging down. Drooping eyelids are actually, if you look at my eyelids now, they're drooping. And that's actually a sign of being sleepy. Um, the word fervent or fervently means with strong or sincere feelings. Notice that the beginning of this word looks like fire, fur, fire. So imagine the lawyers in the courtroom arguing in a hot, fiery manner. In that way, you can remember fervently. So now you actually have mnemonics for disinterested, drooping and fervent. Mnemonics such as these are fantastic tools to make sure that new words stick in your mind and you can actually even draw little cartoons or little pictures representing your mnemonics 
along with the words in your vocabulary notebook. Try to do this for some words that you have already learned. You'll find that it's a lot of fun. Now the most important thing in remembering vocabulary for a long time is review. You must regularly revisit and review words that you have learned in the past. One thing you can do is you can simply peruse or read through the entries in your vocabulary notebook or app. You can look at the words you've learned, you can read their definitions and so on. But that can get a little boring. So a more interesting method is to use flashcards to test yourself. Now before the days of personal computers and uh, mobile devices, you would take a bunch of, of index cards, of cards about that size. You would write a word on one side of the index card and you would turn that index card around and you would write uh, the definition, the uh, part of speech and so on. And then you would mix up all of those cards. You'd take one card at random. You'd look at the word and you would try to remember the meaning. Um, well, today, you don't have to go through that laborious process of making flashcards. Laborious is an adjective that means difficult, taking a lot of time and work. So you don't have to go through that difficult process today because there are many flashcard apps available. In fact, there, are a, there is a plethora of flashcard apps available on the market. Um, you can download these from Play Store or Apple Store and you can use these apps to test the vocabulary that you have learned. So go into uh, your Play Store or your Apple Store. As I said before, uh, as you download the, um, the vocabulary apps that you find, check to see if they have a flashcard function. If they don't, see if you can find other apps that just focus on flashcards. Now ultimately, the key is to incorporate or include what you have learned into your own speech and writing. That is how you will develop a large and powerful vocabulary in the long run. Take whatever you learn and try to actively use those words in your own speaking and in your own writing. Now if you do all that, I'm confident that you will build a powerful vocabulary. All the tips I have shared with you in this lesson, many of them came from the community post that all of you contributed to, but these are tips that all of them are steps that I personally have taken. These are all things that I have done in my own life to improve my vocabulary so I know that these work. Don't forget to download the task checklist and the vocabulary notes from this lesson from the links in the description below. They will be available at the end of the live stream. I hope you found the lesson useful. As always, happy learning and I will see you in another lesson soon.